Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and in today's video we're going to be learning how to make these beautiful watercolor ballerina silhouettes in the style of Point Brush. And Point Brush is a brand that I have built on Instagram and online and this particular print that I'm going to be teaching you today is my signature style. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of art prints and products with this and it is just so much fun to paint. So as much as I'm giving away my secret sauce today, what I really want is for you guys to enjoy the process and really have fun with it as I take you through it step by step. So if you're interested, then keep watching and we'll dive right in. Okay, so let's get our supplies ready. I have my watercolor block, some watercolors, um, a brush, all the things you need to start painting. But what I'm gonna start doing first is I'm gonna draw a line, a baseline along the bottom of my paper for all of my ballerinas to be standing on so that it creates a nice even composition. So I have a piece of black paper that I'm gonna put down since I, I don't have a ruler handy. Uh, so I'm gonna take this piece of black paper and I'm just gonna use that to lightly draw a, um, a, a line line uh, at the bottom of my page. I'm doing that fairly lightly so that you won't see it. We can erase that once we're done with the painting. So we're going to have all of our figures all standing on what is this line that we just drew. They're going to be going from left to right. Um, and we're going to start sketching our figures. So I'm going to create a ball on the top left hand side of my paper and this is going to be for the head of the first figure. And I have a very specific way of creating figures in a, in a sort of skeleton framework. And I go into detail about this in another video that I created, which I'll link in the card above. But you'll see that my figure is drawn using basic forms. So the head is a, is a circle, the torso is a triangle, I'm using lines for legs. So that helps to simplify things. And I know that a lot of people are intimidated by, you know, drawing human bodies um, because there's a lot going on. So using a technique like this really just helps to simplify and to make things a lot less stressful for you. Another thing I like to point out too, when especially for sketching, is a lot of people use just their wrist um, or just their hand to, to draw with, when in fact you get a lot more control and much better line work if you're using the entirety of your forearm. So instead of just using the end of your pencil and being really tight with it, I really recommend using your whole arm and having longer sweeping motions. So let's keep going with these. I've created, what is this, four? Yeah, four different figures one after the other and I'm just gonna keep going until I reach the end of the paper. Okay so we have our lineup um, they're all ready to go and so now let's dive into the exciting part which is the painting. So I'm gonna do all of these using one brush which is a number 10 brush from the Princeton Aqua Elite line of brushes. Whatever you have on hand but I would recommend using a round brush and that's because it's much more versatile and you can get very detailed areas and also uh, be able to do very large thick brush strokes. All right let's wet our paintbrush and start loading it up with um, a color. So I'm going to start with pink and I think this entire painting is going to be a range between pinks and purples and maybe a little bit of blue. So I'm going to keep it within an analogous color family. And if you're not sure what analogous means, then I would recommend taking a look at a video that I created about color theory, which I'll link in the description below. So let's um, start to paint over the pencil markings that we created earlier. And I'm going to try as much as I can to get my paint to bleed from one color to the next. So the first color that I picked up was an opera pink, but right after that, I didn't even wash my brush, I just went straight into purple and picked that up and I'm allowing these colors to bleed into one another and that creates a really gorgeous effect. It just looks really painterly and loose and um, has a gorgeous um, explosion of color. Let's do the skirts now, which is arguably my favorite part. So these are just really thick, juicy brush strokes that start from the middle or the waist of the dancer and they're just angled down, kind of like the petals of a flower, like an upside down flower. And I'm dotting in some extra pigment here to get that, that gorgeous bleed of color that I was mentioning earlier that I love. Now let's add the legs in. So I'm going to start at the top 
and I'm gonna drag my brush all the way down. I'm gonna go from a thicker line to a much thinner line where the brush is barely even touching the paper. Finish that with a small oval and you have a very simple but very elegant ballerina silhouette. And artists, feel free when the paint is still wet to add a little bit more pigment wherever you see fit. I wouldn't do it all over, but if you see little areas that you wanna call out and highlight, then definitely do that. All right, so let's do the same thing for our second dancer. And this one I'm gonna do, and I'm just picking out um, a, a purple, uh, purple and blue. And we're going to do the same thing with this second one. And I'm going to allow the colors to bleed into one another. So I'm doing this while the first dancer is still wet. So that way I can get the colors to flow from one side of the painting to the other and everything connects and looks really unified and harmonious. And you'll see that as you progress and as you start getting more comfortable with these, then maybe you'll be willing to take a little bit more risks along with the colors as well. So maybe, you know, you introduce a red or a blue or maybe even an orange. So you don't have to necessarily follow my color palette if you want yours to have a completely different look and feel. I've done these in neutrals before, I've done them in blues, and each time is just an adventure in itself. One little note about the legs is that where the calf muscle starts, so right below where the knee is, I recommend making that area a little bit thicker and then tapering it off, which will make the leg look more realistic. Now that you know what you're doing, I'm going to speed up the footage a little bit so that, um, you know, this video doesn't take 10 hours. <laughs> Okay, so you could stop right here if you wanted to, but I'm gonna add some details to the bottom of the skirts. And I'm gonna do this using just the tip of my brush, creating these W or U kind of shapes um, on the bottom of these skirts. And that's gonna make it look like these fluffy little tutus. And don't worry if they're not even, don't worry if it ends up being dry in some areas and bleeds in some other areas. Um, that's all part of that beautiful um, loose effect that we're going for here. I'm mostly using pinks, but I'm also gonna grab some ultramarine blue for some pops on the purple skirts. I'm really loving how this has turned out. I mean, I think it looks so pretty. So you could essentially be done here again, but I'm going to take it even a step further and um, add some gold metallics to this. And that's something that I like to do on certain pieces to give it that extra little pop and glamorous edge. So if you have some gold paint on hand, then I would suggest taking that out now. I'm gonna be using some gold paint from the brand Golden, and it's an acrylic paint. And the color that I have is iridescent gold deep fine, but pretty much any gold that you have should be fine as well. So I'm going to put that into a little tray and I like to keep this separate from my watercolor palette because uh, acrylics dry differently and they're, they're gonna change the composition of your watercolors. So I would recommend having that on a separate mixing palette. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to wet the paint a little bit because I want the acrylic to have a bit more of a watery or translucent consistency. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add little touches um, or accents onto my painting. So I'm not gonna go all over the place. I'm going to be actually quite conservative and um, sparing with my use of the gold. And that's gonna make those areas shine and pop even more. So less is more in this particular situation. And I'm just doing some accents 
sense to the bottom of the skirts. And I'm adding some dots also that kind of resemble maybe sequins, if you use your imagination, on select parts of the dress. And they can even extend beyond the actual dress itself. So that can, you know, you can use your imagination and you can be a bit more creative with this. And um, even follow your own motifs if you want. If you want to build some florals in there or some stripes could be beautiful as well. Um, just go for it. So I'm feeling pretty good about this painting by now, and it's also something to be said about knowing when to stop. Um, so let's just put a couple of, I can't resist, a couple of extra touches. Let's sign it and um, we're done. So that's it. Ballerinas in the signature point brush style. I hope you enjoyed this video and that hopefully it inspired you to keep working on your art, growing, and maybe finding your signature style as well. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching and joining me every week, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.